All right, so welcome again, everyone. Uh, we'll start our um, user experience design info session today. Uh, my name is Gary. I work at the Arc and Design Department, supporting graphic design, UX, UI, visual arts, interior design, and interior architecture programs. Uh, my background is in fine arts. I worked in graphic design, branding, and UX design prior to joining UC Berkeley Extension. Yvonne Shuhiyo uh, specializes in packaging design, branding, and UX design, worked for Kimberly Clark Corporation, Acuity Brands, Nice Limited, and Adium IDEO. He is also a freelance designer and has worked with uh, Dunghill, Puma, Safeway, Lexus, Samsung, Emory uh, University, and Marilyn Jaker Skin Care. He is currently our program director of graphic UX and interactive design at uh, UC Berkeley Extension. Uh, we will be presenting this info session together. Uh, we also have some. Uh, we also have, so also have some um, pause points in between the um, presentation to answer any questions. So any questions you may have, you can drop them in the uh, Q and A box on the control panel on the bottom of um, your screen. And without further uh, ado, I will let Yvonne begin the presentation. Thank you, Gary. Hi, everyone, and welcome to UC Berkeley Extension. So like today, uh, you're going to spend a little bit of time with us, like finding out what uh, our program offers. And so um, let's start. So, oops, hold on. Something happened. <laughs> um, you know, like the UX design field, it's a growing field. And there are, uh, you know, like in high demand for UX designers. So like the Bureau of Labor of Statistics projects a 13% increase in job opportunities in the UX design field from now until 2028. And that means that you know, there are plenty of jobs out there. Like this is one of the fields with uh, most increase for, you know, like the next five years or six years, uh, because like every organization out there needs a UX designer. And so you guys are in good luck when, when it comes to the possibilities of finding a job. Uh, Gary, are there any questions like so far? Uh, we do not have any questions right now, so we can go ahead and proceed with our presentation. Okay. So uh, this is what we recommend you to do for, you know, to enter the field and to find a job in UX design, you're going to need the minimum requirement that most companies ask for it's a bachelor's degree. And so that bachelor's degree can be in any subject matter. So we highly recommend you that you have a bachelor's degree. And then with our professional program in user experience, which, uh, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about the curriculum in, in a little while, that represents great job opportunities. And, you know, our courses are in line with, you know, like those positions that are out there available. And so uh, our courses are called for what they are. And we do, uh, you know, like we bring all those different skills that a UX designer might be doing or a visual designer and so on. And so, uh, when you finish the program and you uh, start a job, you can find a job in the following, you know, like specialties of UX design. So you can be a UX designer and that's a generalist. That's a person that does a little bit of everything. Uh, visual designer, you know, like if you're doing the interface of applications or interface of websites and things like that, that's the job of a visual designer, a content strategies, an interaction designer, a 
UI information architect, a user-centered designer, or user researcher. And then these are going to be, for the most part, like entry-level positions. Uh, why are we here? Why is UC Berkeley Extension uh, offering these courses? We want to meet, you know, like your needs. As a student, you might have a need uh, in career changing. Maybe uh, you're not satisfied with what you're currently doing, or you want to move on onto UX for different reasons. So that's why we're here. Uh, some of you might be already in the field, uh, but you need, you know, like sort of like take courses for career advancement, for uh, professional development, so we can fill in those gaps. Um, you, with the program, you're going to develop a strong UX foundation. You will develop a specific UX skills that you're going to be you know, using in your job, um, you will be able to create a professional portfolio. And uh, also for those of you that want to go to uh, grad school, because all of our courses are um, project-based and, and the idea is that you develop portfolio pieces in every single of uh, course that you take with us then you'll be able to uh, fulfill that need if that's, you know, like one of your goals to apply to grad school. Or you develop the portfolio because you're applying for a job. And normally in the design industry, you're going to need a portfolio in order to land a job. You need to demonstrate that you're able to do, uh, you know, in this case, UX design. And, and that gets on with uh, showing different portfolio uh, projects. So our professional program in UX design, uh, it's composed of six required courses and one elective course. Uh, all of the courses can be uh, done you know, like in one to two years, that's the average to uh, average time for completion. And the program can be done part-time or can be done also like full-time. Um, if one takes uh, one course per semester, that will be seven total semesters. So like more or less two and a half years. Uh, but if one takes two courses per semester, uh, then that will be only uh, a year and one semester, so a year and a half. All the program can be also like taken on a, on a full-time basis, and that will be two semesters. So uh, if your desire is to take a full-time uh, program, like this semester, you can take four courses. And next semester, uh, you can take the following uh, three final courses. So let's talk a little bit about each of the different courses uh, that we offer. So like um, on the screen, you're seeing like courses number one through six, and that's the way that we highly recommend you to take the courses so that you have an understanding of like um, how the program works and, and what will be sort of like the best sequence if you don't have any uh, design experience. And the courses will appear on the website in that same order. They don't have a number on the website, but you know, like they appear in, in that same way. So uh, in the essentials of UX design course, you will get to know the UX environment as a field of study and how it works. Uh, you will un understand and apply user-centered design practices conduct user research, persona development, usability testing, and you will compile like those results and analyze those, right? 
Uh, you'll convey, the, convey design choices through visual and written assets, including, uh, for instance, like sitemaps, user flows, wireframes, and prototypes. And you will also apply UX and UI design principles through team assignments, uh, collaborating with other design students on design critiques and presentations. Uh, when it comes to diagramming and prototyping course number two in the program, you'll demonstrate which diagram or prototyping method it's appropriate uh, based on where you are in the overall design process, right? Because now you have a little bit of more understanding of, um, you know, like what prototypes should you use and when. Uh, understand and synthesize information about diagramming through real world samples, uh, you will design successful visual diagrams and prototypes that are um, intuitive and self-explanatory, right? Like that's the main idea also to make things like really easy for the user. Uh, and also determine which level of fidelity it's appropriate based on, on the stage in which you are in at that particular moment with the whole ecosystem and present your concept effectively and gain uh, buy-in and support from the stakeholders. So like those are the main uh, aspects for that course. When it comes to the visual design principles um, course, which is number three, you will analyze and construct the graphic and visual design using design elements and design principles. And you will incorporate also like the gestalt theory to study perception and design, which is sort of like combining like negative and positive space and, and making things you know, like appropriate to the subject matter and understanding like uh, different levels of hierarchy, like what goes first, uh, you know, like colors and things like that. Uh, you will study the design process, the spatial relationships, the structure, the integration of type with imagery and the use of color through quick visual explorations. Uh, you will also examine uh, grid systems for both, for uh, print and for web. Uh, you will develop typographic literacy by com uh, confidently selecting and applying typography that fits to that particular purpose and create a portfolio of design pieces that exhibit the principles of design. Um, when it comes to user research, you'll understand usability testing and user experience. You'll explore best practices for developing a research plan, uh, develop, conduct, and analyze and report findings from uh, a user uh, research study. That's really important. Ensure that research is applicable to product development, right? That those things go together. Like uh, I gotta have a good understanding about my users in order to be able to design and make the, the right, you know, like prototype, you know, the right design uh, approach for that particular um, project that I might be working on. And I, uh, Last but not least, you will explore qualitative and quantitative research methods. Um, information architecture and content strategy, it's your course number five, and it is divided in um, six weeks of information architecture and six weeks of content strategy. So you will describe each planning phase of content strategy. You will integrate uh, SEO, search engine optimization and accessibility initiatives to enhance uh, content discoverability, to be able to find 
you know, like content on a website or on an application. Uh, you describe the role of a content management system and templates and microcopy in content strategy and identity related uh, deliverables. Um, you will evaluate information architecture and content quality and discoverability through user research. You will translate research findings uh, into practical designs and content by doing car sorting, tree testing, and also wayfinding. And uh, last but not least, specify design and prototype optimized navigational systems, including labels, tags, and taxonomies. Uh, and that's what is gonna like give a solid structure, you know, to a content management system where, uh, you know, sometimes we're gonna be doing websites, sometimes we're gonna be doing applications. And then uh, the last required course is user interface design. And, and the, you know, prominent purposes of this class is to differentiate UI design from other design disciplines and know the foundational principles of an effective user interface. Uh, break down an interaction into discrete detailed micro interactions, uh, communicate a set of logical conditions through multiple states of uh, an interaction and articulate the psychology behind what makes UI design work uh, and illustrate the basic content and functionality of your interaction. Yeah, so through the program, uh, we're talking about electives. So one of the uh, courses, you um, the program requires one of the elective courses. So these are the list of all the elective courses that we have available. Uh, one of which is UX Design Portfolio, which is our exi exiting course that you should be taking at the end of the program. Um, we talk about branding. Obviously, we talk about you know how 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 to present yourself. And as a reminder, each of a course um, you, you is being built for design uh, for a portfolio piece at the end of the semester. So by the end of the of the uh, program, you would have at least you know, six portfolio pieces um, that that you you're able to show in the UX design portfolio class. Uh, the next up is qualitative research, design implementation, and methods. So you get an introduction of what quali uh, qualitative research is and the type of qualitative research methods. Um, you expect to conduct your own qualitative research study um, and develop a research plan really based on the given uh, situation, collecting the data and using the qualitative um, methodologies to engage with uh, your design and also uh, to um, validate your design. Um, then. The third uh, electives that uh, we have is quantitative UX uh, me uh, metrics and research. So that again, you gain a fundamental understanding of how usability data is uh, collected and how you interpreted interpret your data as well as how you um, can utilize your, your data in your design um, through you know, uh, A-B testings or um, anal analyze your visualization of your data. Uh, to validate your design again. Um, we also have human-centered design for data visualize visualization. So that is the essential of visual design, um, visual encoding, information design, and also human-computer interact interaction that can be applied to your data visual visualization. And uh, you utilize that um, data processing and data uh, life cycles, uh, quantitative and qualitative, um, to um, engage with your design. Uh, we also have design thinking and UX strategy uh, that is currently not um, available. So all of these electives are available once, uh, once, maybe twice a year. So it depends on the uh, semester. Um, accessibility in UX design, which is very important now uh, with all the firms, uh, we're talking about you know examining principles of 
uh, universal design and define a concept of multimedia accessibility um, that, you know, to break the barriers uh, for anyone with um, anyone with disabilities in terms of, you know, um, a lot of uh, design principles can be uh, the proper use of color, contrast, or even tagging of your photos or your text and the form accessibility um, that will help the design uh, to break down that barrier. And it's, it's a big market that a lot of companies are trying to tap into. Um, service design, um, that's one of our electives that, uh, that we offered, um, not in this semester, but in future semester. Uh, of course, we have a web design with HTML and CSS3. Uh, being a UX designer, you also it's also important to know about coding, even though it's not necess necessary, but it's the language that you can build and talk with your um, engineering team and knowing the limitation of your design is all, always crucial. Uh, internship in academic and professional practice, um, that program is not under our academic department. However, um, it's uh, from a different department that you can apply. Um, with, that, with that, you learn about you know, interactive lectures and gui guided activities um, to learn about more, you know, learn more about your effective uh, resume and cover letter. And you also learn about you know, uh, job coaching as well as um, interview, uh, interview uh, tips to help you land that first job. Um, and then all the electives from 10 to 14, you know, typography fundamentals, Illustrator 1, Photoshop, InDesign, and branding. Those are part of our um, graphic design work stream. However, um, they're, the, all of these uh, courses are you know, obviously very beneficial um, to either as a refresher or to further your um, skill sets if you want to venture to, you know, to be a little bit more robust of a user design. Uh, designer. So those are all these courses are beneficial. Next. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, hold on. I want to make, um, you know, like a comment over here. The electives that are offered this semester in the spring 2023 are UX design portfolio, uh, qualitative research, design implementation and methods, uh, also accessibility in UX design and web design with HTML5 and CSS3, uh, as well as the last five, uh, typography, Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, oh no, the la uh, not branding, but from 10 to 13. Also, um, you know, when it comes to the UX design portfolio, as Gary mentioned, that will be the last course that uh, one needs to take in the program because you'll be bringing, uh, you know, like all of your six projects uh, that you have worked in previous courses into that one. And the instructor uh, will, uh, you know, like guide you and coach you on you know like how to make your projects better and stronger like polish them refine them tweak them editing uh and all of that which is extremely important right because presentation is is king uh content is king when it comes to you know like putting that final portfolio together uh, another thing that we do in the portfolio course is that we bring uh, a headhunter that talks about like job search and, you know, uh, resumes and things like that. We bring different guest speakers. And there is one particular evening that we bring different UX, UI designers or UX researchers to talk to you individually about your uh, portfolio pieces. So like we do breakout groups and use it individually with uh, various individuals during that evening, like three or four of them, five, depending on how many people uh, we have in the classroom and how many people we get, but normally it's a very substantial um, meeting because, you know, like these are working professionals that see uh, what's happening in, in, in design, right? And, and they're, 
normally also like in charge of like hiring for their own teams. So it's really good to interact with them uh, that way. So uh, when it comes, when, when the time comes, just be aware that that's what we do in the UX design portfolio course. Yeah, so we recommend, um, as a beginner, we recommend to have an app, uh, Apple MacBook of 16 gigabyte RAM uh, or, a, or equivalent in a PC with a similar cap capability. And also as students, you also um, can get a uh, Adobe membership for $19.99 per month. And that, include, that includes um, you know, any Adobe product, you know, Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign. And of course, you know, with uh, user experience, we use um, uh, XD, Adobe XD, which is prototyping uh, tool. That can be very useful for uh, for our uh, program and uh, other software that may be used um, based on the instructor's preference uh, could be sketch uh, figma invasion principles and etc so it depends on what um, what the instructor wants wants to do, to use in that particular class So do we have any questions? Um, don't be shy. This seems like a very quiet group. Um, is this a degree granting, granting program? Uh, no. Uh, you know, like in continuing education, or, you know, like we call ourselves UC Berkeley extension, we don't grant degrees, we, you know, like grant certificates. Uh, degrees normally, uh, you know, are like three or four year full-time programs and master programs are like uh, two to three years, depending on even one year if it's an MA. Uh, but normally uh, an MFA takes two or three years. And, and we don't, you know, in continuing education, normally that doesn't happen. So we don't grant degrees, we grant certificates. Um, so with all these courses, are there any overlap between courses? Sometimes there's a little bit of overlapping content, uh, but not highly redundant, like uh, the courses are planned in a way that uh, sometimes we want you to hear uh, one thing, one other at least twice so that it gets really like sink in your brain on how and when to use it. But there is not a lot of like redundancy when it comes into, into the content. They tackle specific aspects of um, the particulars within the industry, right? Like in information architecture, like, yes, we might do a prototype, but then the prototype gets done in a different way that, that it's done in diagramming and, and prototyping. Because you might be, do, be doing like three testing or anything like that. So there's different ways of uh, prototyping information. Um, another question, I have an archi architecture construction background with 10 years of experience. What shall be successful rate of landing a first job? After uh, after the program. Sorry, can you repeat the question for me? Yeah. So this particular uh, question is that um, this person has an architecture uh, background, mm -hmm. and he's wondering, you know, with his uh, background and Mary with our user experience design program, would that be a good good fit? Oh yes, that would be a perfect fit, basically, because you know, like when you have uh architecture as a background you know uh you will be able to organize information right like is think about like buildings you stack things on top of each other right like depending if it's a two three or ten or 20 story building the same thing is going to happen in ux uh and specifically in information architecture, you're gonna have, you know, like sort of like 
uh, skills that are transferable, right? Because you know how to like organize information already. So like that will be to, to your advantage. That's going to be a, a good fit. We have uh, many students in the past with architecture backgrounds, uh, like doing phenomenal things these days. And what about having a psychology degree background? A psychology degree background? Let me tell you this, regardless of what your uh, previous degree might be, there are a lot of transfer skills when it comes into the UX field because we can use, um, you know, like what you learned previously and then transfer it over here one way, one other. So like if you um, have a psychology background, you already know research methodologies. You already know uh, are in use to like doing research, uh, you know, like gathering findings using qualitative and quantitative methods. What you're gonna do in our courses is that, you know, like since you already have that background, uh, you can, you know, like, specialize in a way in user research because a lot of those skills are already there. You just need to have an understanding of the UX field itself, but that's also a, a great advantage. Anybody with sociology, psychology, anthropology, uh, cognitive science, experimental psychology, uh, people normally thrive in the user research aspect, but doesn't mean that you cannot do design, like we, you can do design as well. Um, one last question, and then we move on with our presentation, is that um, does this, this program offer to students out of state? Yeah, the program can be taken uh, by anyone, like students, you know, like statewide, nationwide, and internationally. Uh, yeah, that's not, not a problem. The only thing is that uh, you got to be aware of uh, our times, which Gary's going to talk about that in a little while. All right, so we're going to move on with our presentation. Next page. So who you learn from. So we have uh, Manny Dar uh, Darden, who is a senior UX designer and instructor at, uh, he's currently working at Apple. Uh, he teaches our user interface UI design. We have Tom Garrick, uh, who is a creator, director, and educator at Garrick and Kelly Brand Development. He teaches our visual design principle well course. We also have Dr. Jennifer Romano, uh, who is a senior user experience researcher and strategist uh, coach, educator, author, and keynote speaker, uh, who is currently working at Google. She teaches our user, uh, user research as well as our accessibility in UX design uh, courses. Uh, next up, we have Pamela Wong, who is our product development engineer and instructor. Uh, she's currently working for Ford Motor Company and she teaches our web design with HTML and CSS3. Uh, Josh Hastat, uh, senior manager, brand, um, brand activist, as well as educator and author, uh, who is currently working at Design Matters. Uh, he teaches accessibility in UX design with, our, with uh, Dr. Jennifer Romano. Um, the next, we have Scott Lacoon. Um, who is our UX content designer, writer, men mentor as well in instructor, work currently working as uh, Extron. He teaches UX design and content strategy. He's a co-instructor um, with our content strategy and information architecture course. Uh, we have Deborah Michalis. Um, she is a U UX consultant and instructor, currently working for UX Brood Strapper, Strapper and uh, teaches UX design. Uh, Sarah Fatala, uh, our senior uh, designer, UX researcher and instructor. Um, she's currently working at Think of Us, teaches UX design, uh, research and service design. 
we have Rakesh Pawari, um, who is a product design manager at uh, an educator who is currently working at uh, Meta, uh, previously known Facebook. He teaches our information architecture program uh, course with uh, Scott. And Earl Freiberg, um, UX lead and instructor and mentor. He's currently working at Google, teaches the content strategy um, portion of the, of the course. Oh, one more thing. Um, so you see like all these different instructors, uh, they work in the field, right? They work for different organizations. That's what they do day in and day out, right? Like uh, they have their own specialty at those different organizations. And so what we do, it's we pair their, um, their specialty, what they normally do in their jobs with the courses that they're going to be teaching. So like you are in, in really good hands with each of them because, you know, that's what they do every day. They bring skills uh, into the classroom, things that happen in their offices, in their labs every day. That's the content that they're bringing into each of the courses, which is different from a teacher, one instructor that it's a researcher for a university because uh, they don't have, you know, necessarily like that work experience of everyday things uh, working for an organization. And so like, we feel that our instructors uh, are really qualified for, for teaching these courses. Uh, and they have also like a uh, great experience uh, in teaching. So our program is currently in remote learning with um, two instructional types, uh, live online and fixed day online. So we're going to talk about it, uh, the differences between them. Uh, with live online courses are uh, an alternative to an in-person classes, if you will, just via Zoom, very similar to what we're doing right now. And typically with live demos, lectures are not recorded. Uh, rec um, you would meet with your instructors and classmates weekly, um, three, three hours per week per class at the scheduled dates and times in the Pacific Standard Time. So for any students who are out of state, so keep that in mind with the time differences. Um, your live participation is also part of the grading cr criteria. So make sure that you attend all the uh, sessions. And outside of live sessions, you would interact with um, your instructors and your um, classmates via our learning management system called Canvas. So the other instructional type is fixed date online courses. So these are pre-recorded materials along with uh, predetermined assignments and due dates for each project. You get access to the course materials anytime at your convenience during the uh, enrollment period. And you would interact with your instructors and uh, uh, classmates uh, through discussion boards. For an example, you know, um, in, in a discussion board via, um, via our uh, learning management tools, uh, Canvas, as well as email, uh, course emails uh, with your instructor. So you get, also get uh, office hours as well with these um, fixed day online courses. And that will be determined upon uh, you know, enrollment and at your instructor's discretion, uh, discretion as well. Normally like those office hours, like are set up, uh, you know, like in the morning and in the evening so that the instructor can meet people in different time zones. So sometimes they're gonna tell you like my office hours are like are 7 or 8 a.m. Pacific time. And then uh, my next office hours perhaps is the same day, like 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So that, you know, like if you want to meet with your instructor, if you have questions about your project, uh, if you don't understand certain concepts or anything like that, you have access to them, you know, like uh, through some, you know, like doing those office hours where you can have, you know, like lifetime with that particular instructor. 
So what um, register the program uh, by submitting or um, a non-refundable online registration. So you're officially in the program and it allows our register office to track your progress uh, and review your student records, obviously at the end of every semester to ensure all the courses are met with a letter um, grade of C or better and um, a certificate will, uh, will um, be issued upon completion. Next page. So our graduate, um, we'll, we'll do, um, we have many graduates throughout the uh, years and we have um, Clara, let me just, I'm gonna butcher a lot of names. <laughs> Clara, Clara Azulay. Azulay. Az Azulay. <laughs> it's okay, no worries. <laughs> she is our, our graduate. Uh, she is currently an in interaction designer at Google Maps. And uh, by the way, any participants up for this info session will also get a um, this presentation deck. So you will be able to visit their website and look at their uh, current work as well as their portfolio pieces from our program. Uh, the next one is uh, Lisa Jack Jacker. <laughs> She's a product design lead at Air Wallets. And you will, again, will be able to have a chance to visit her website. Oscar Co. He is our senior product designer uh, working at Palo Alto Networks currently. Um, we have Monica Ma. Uh, she's our senior product designer working at Super Rare Labs. Uh, we have Raman Patovi, um, who is our UX UI designer at uh, iTrade Network. And we have Stana Masu. Masu um, she is the UX designer. Uh, specialist too, working at Amazon. So one thing that we're going to show you also in a little bit, it's our website uh, in which you can find, you know, like different stories uh, of, in our blog from students in the UX program. So there are different articles there also from instructors. So we uh, welcome you to read those and find uh, like details about their journeys and, and how they did certain things so that you can have an idea as to uh, what might happen to you uh, after completing the program. So what's next? So by basically participating in this uh, info session, you have created a uh, free student account already. Uh, obviously, enroll in our courses, submit your online registration to be uh, officially in the program. Um, another thing that's very crucial is also sign up for our monthly email uh, newsletter. So that uh, there's a short form on our uh, program page. And uh, you, it's like always good, you know, get some uh, insight information into the design field uh, right from the start. So that will be very beneficial for anyone who wants to be in a design field to just get get uh, included. Yeah, and normally we'll send you, you know, like information about what courses are available that month. Uh, we're not the typical university that starts and finish uh, all courses the same week of the semester. Uh, for instance, we have uh, courses that begin now in January, uh, in February and March, and that's all part of the, the spring semester. Uh, also like in the summer semester, we have courses starting in June and July, and in the fall semester, we have courses starting in September and October. Uh, so you might, if you're interested in taking, uh, you know, like cor many courses during the same semester, then you're not gonna have totally overlap of like those 10 or 10, 10 or 12 weeks that, they, uh, that each course lasts all happening at the same time. You might have, you know, like, three or four weeks or two weeks uh, to work more in your projects because not all of the, the, the different dates are landing on the same way. So that's also an advantage uh, for you. Uh, 
Oh, one thing that it's valid to mention is that like all of the images that you're seeing in this presentation are done by, you know, our former students with their permission. And also uh, here is a screen capture of one of our portfolio reviews uh, where we have, you know, like students and professionals uh, gathering together, you know, like doing those uh, feedback sessions. Um, one of the questions is, can I take the courses in any order? We highly recommend you the courses, um, you know, the, the way they appear on the website, just, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, just for you to make an easy transition uh, in between, you know, like subject matters. Uh, but, you know, like if you cannot, because, you know, like the day or the time in which is offered, it's not convenient for one reason or another, it's okay to make an exception like here and there, but follow the, the, the sequence as much as possible. They do not have prerequisites for uh, one another, uh, except for the UI course that you would need to have uh, the UX uh, fundamentals or, and the user research course because you know, like those are essential uh, courses uh, that need that you need the information before you get to the UI component. So, what about elective courses? So, there's a particular um, question: Is that this person wants to take qualitative research before mm -hmm. any of the courses, <laughs> any of the required courses? Is that possible? Is that doable? That's totally fine. Yeah, that's totally fine because um, is this person the same person that did psychology by any chance? No, it's just an no. anonymous uh, question. So okay. It would be a, a different person, I would think. Okay. Yeah, like if that's your interest uh, and you want to know, you know, about user research, yeah, by all means, you, you can do oh, it. To confirm, yes, it's about by the same, um, same student who, uh, who has a psychology background. Yeah, and that course is offered this semester. So you kind of start with that because you already have fundamentals uh, in research. Uh, when do I learn about upcoming courses? Uh, through signing uh, that form, I'm going to show you on the website. So why don't I navigate to the website, Gary? Okay. And, and like I can answer questions uh, okay. from from there too. Um. So going back to the question, if you fill out this form over here, then you will get to know when uh what courses are upcoming next because we'll send you a newsletter uh with particular courses for ux design in your case right like the university does this for all the programs we won't bombard you with all different fields of study if we know that you're interested in one or two programs uh then that's the information that we're going to send you are there any uh, no, we don't have any more questions. Okay, so let me show you a couple of things over side. So like, uh, let me just go back over here to the general page. So if like when you type extension that Berkeley that is the you, this is where you're gonna land. You go to academic areas and then uh, navigate to art and design on the left side. And then uh, scroll, then you can see points in, um, let me refresh over here. Okay. 
love the Israeli slow. Uh, so you can see here like all the different programs that, that are offered throughout the art and design department. And then you can click on the professional programming user experience design. Uh, uh, you click on like this person's name, Lace Kelly Ramos, like that will take you to uh, our voices blog, right? And there's an article this one inviting you and welcoming you to read articles where you were signed because you're interested in that. If you type UX sign in the search box and um, then you'll find like many in terms of uh, UX specifically, and there are some articles for our, so uh, feel free to peruse throughout those and, and, you know, hopefully you'll find the information there uh, help. here to the courses let's click on the first one which is essentials of user experience design uh so here you find the course description if you click on the course outline then you'll find course objectives what you learn and not everything is listed over here because it will become like it will be extremely long uh but we you know, like posting there, like the most important information of the course, how you learned, you know, like how we run our course. And, you know, we recommend you the course that it's next in the sequence, right? Like, again, if you're taking it full time, take the first four courses uh, that appear on the website. But what I want you to show you is that there are, uh, in this particular case, there are two sections for this course. Uh, one that it's live online, and Gary explained that, that's through Zoom, simultaneously with your instructor and all of your classmates at the same time, normally 6 to 9 p.m. All of our courses are gonna be offered in the evening because uh, the majority of our students are working professionals. And then if you click on the instructor's name, uh, there's gonna appear a short uh, bio so that you get to know a little bit about them. Uh, it tells you about the uh, cause of the course and if you click on the section on details, then it tells you, you know, like the day of the week, in this case, Wednesday, 6 to 9 p.m. And the dates when the course run from January 25th to March 29th. And then if you want to view details of the calendar, then it will tell you like what the, the you know, uh, what are the specific days so that you have that in mind uh for you know planning your your own course taking uh the number of hours the format uh all of our, our courses uh are two units they're credit courses which is different from other organizations that are, might be non uh credited and uh you know the equipment gary went over that that's a little reminder some of the courses are going to have course materials that the instructor wants you to get from the beginning. And, you know, like some of the software that you might be using. Don't purchase any software until you hear from the instructor because then uh, we have our instructors rotating. They don't teach every semester. Like we take turns, we give them a break. Uh, and so uh, sometimes they're going to uh, require uh, their preference when it comes to the software because they know what works uh, for that particular industry. And then here, sometimes you're going to have uh, courses listed. Sometimes they're going to 
say optional as, as these are, but sometimes they're gonna be required uh, courses. And so I just need you to like know and be aware of, of that when it comes to each of our offerings. And um, anything else I gotta show on the website, Gary? Uh, no, I think that's all we. Um, I think that's all we have. I don't think we have anything else. But um, since we here, I do have a question though. There is uh, this particular question. So, if, if English is my second language, would I be successful in this program? The answer it's yes if you have any of these sort of like level of. English, right? Like, even if you, um, as long as you can write, you can understand, you can have conversations with others because, you know, like whether you are taking it live online simultaneously with others, you're going to have to work with classmates and with your instructor. And also like if you are online asynchronous, you're gonna have to write, you know, a lot to your uh, classmates. In UX design, uh, there's a lot of writing involved in each portfolio project. Uh, I mean, in each project. And so that means that you're gonna have to, you know, like have written notes and things like that written commentary about one thing, one other. So like, as long as, you know, like you have any of these levels, then you'll be okay. Anything um, else? Yeah, so another question is that if I were uh, wanting to take this course, uh, this program as a full-time student, would there be any overlapping in terms of scheduling, dates and times uh, between courses? Um, not necessarily, but that's why we're giving you like all of this information over here, right? So that you can uh, see when the courses run and then you can compare, you know, like perhaps take a screenshot or take notes when uh, essential design is happening. Right, like you go back and then if you are taking uh, another course, my computer is really slow, I'm noticing that. Let me refresh over here. <clears throat> yeah, what I was saying is like, you can compare, you know, like two, three or four different courses Normally we don't uh, place them in the same day, but at the same time, there are only four days of the week, right? We offer our classes Monday through Thursday. And this semester we're offering 10 different courses, right? Like uh, six that are required, like those six required courses get offered every semester and electives get offered like once a, a year or twice a year. And so uh, you gotta be aware of that, right? Because for instance, like, yeah, this semester there are 10 courses. So that means that we have to put like two or three courses uh, each day of the week. But at the same time, some courses begin in January, uh, some others in February or March. So like the ones that begin in January normally ends in early March and the ones that begin in March ends by the end of May. So that allows you also to take, you know, like courses uh, within the same semester at different in different months. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with my computer, so. And also uh, another I'm, good tips is also, you know, our uh, user experience design program has two different instructional types. So we have live online as well as an online fixed date with the same course. So you maybe you can, you know, take a look at that. Uh, look, at, look at the uh, fixed day online course as uh, an alternative, which allows you to, you know, log into um, the course at, at your convenience. So that way you can, you know, 
fit more courses into a semester and have have everything done earlier. So that may be an option. Um, are, I don't, are there any other questions? No, I don't think we have any more questions. We're good. Okay. So I, I drop our um, inbox or our program inbox um, to the uh, chat box. So you can email us anytime. Our program email account is extension dash UX design at berkeley.edu. I also um, put a put our program page um, URL into the chat box as well, um, as well as our um, as well as our um, Berkeley Career Development um, uh, Department uh, URL. So send us more an email with any additional questions. In the meantime, we thank you for your participation and thank you for coming and joining our info session today. We we'll hope you're inspired. Do you have anything anything to add, Ivan? Uh, no, uh, just thank you and just be aware that courses uh, might start uh, next week or the week after. If you're interested, like go to the website and see what you might be interested in and and sign up if right. you if that's what you would like to do. All right. So thank you for everyone for coming. Take care.